स्थापकाय च धर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णाय ते नम Dear friends we have been studying the fourth chapter third chapter of the bhagavad gita and the nomenclature and the title of the chapter is chapter on karma yoga we do not know what karma yoga is we indians right from our childhood we hear the word karma yoga karma bhoga phonetically sound wise we are very much acquainted to these words but what do those words mean in actuality we never have any occasion to pay attention to it that is the disadvantage of being born in a tradition the words are known to us knowing the words we think we know the meaning and we never bother to dive deep in to understand the meaning this is an inherent shortcoming of being traditionally exposed to these words whereas a person save a christian by faith he has developed an idea of studying indian scriptures and indian way of life so as soon as they hear the word karma bhoga he will say swami stop you better explain what does karma bhoga be he wants to know the meaning of the word so he can follow the sequence of discussion what does karma yoga mean keeping this in view we have been spending a lot of time on the foundational shloka of the concept of karma yoga the shloka number 4 karma naam anarambhat purusham naishkarmam na ashnute paraphrase of the first line of the fourth chapter shri krishna says without any ambiguity without any hesitancy but with determination purusham nashnuti a person will never be able to reach that state known as naishkarma siddhi and what is it that is by constant diligent determined practice you convert your flow of life that is you convert your activities of life into a reverential interaction a worshipful manner of being aware of presence of god and you offer it to him you do not have any worldly expectation of your acts and deeds if you do not start your life as a sakama karmi yes i am a normal ordinary human being i have my ambitions i want to achieve something in this life therefore i am determined to be motivated by these ambitions which i must achieve and fulfill and that is why i am working hard 
that is what we are today that is why we are so active and that activity has been sanctified by the concept of sense of duty that your sense of duty propels you to perform your duty and when you perform the duty you are motivated to achieve the goal or your ambition sri krishna says please for heaven's sake start with it you start you make a start there's nothing wrong in it that is normal natural common sensical as we are constituted today but if you want to enjoy the freedom of a person who is absolutely without any bondage whatsoever which is known as liberation freedom realization whatever you may say if you want to reach that goal you better start from your kindergarten class be an excellent student be a performer and perform it in a manner that i krishna will teach you and slowly and slowly and slowly by your diligent determined disciplined devoted effort you will achieve that space, stage where your whole flow of life's activity has been converted into a reverential interaction with the divine known as worshipful attitude you will reach that listen to me how you go about it this is how the fourth shloka is the foundational concept of the concept karma yoga the word karma yoga and he says if you do not do so and if you become a lazy loon in the name of spirituality i am doing nothing i am a sanyasi i have rejected everything of the world i have uttered certain mantras i have offered butter and etc to the fire i have worn a gerua cloth and i am a swami without ever being careful of managing the movement of your mind it is a height of self deception is a height of hypocrisy the second shloka he says nacha sanyasana teva siddhim samadhi gachati if you pose to be a swami instead of knowing the art of converting karma bhoga suffering the results of your activity you free yourself from that and you purify yourself by interacting with the presence of the divine in your life all the time then only you qualify to be a real sanyasi a constant interaction with the awareness of presence of the divine in your life when your ego is directed towards this goal only and nothing else then you are worthy being called as sanyasi so he warns us what does he say don't cheat on yourself you start from where you are you are a karma bhogi sakama karmi that is 
वॉट एवर आई एम डूइंग आई एम डूइंग विथ एन अल्टीरियर मोटिव ऑफ गेनिंग दिस फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड नाउ यू स्टार्ट विथ योर रैशनैलिटी एज श्री रामकृष्ण हेड सेड ज्ञान मिश्रा भक्ति वॉट इज इट विथ योर रैशनैलिटी यू कन्विंस योर सेल्फ विथ अ रॉक सॉलिड कन्विक्शन क्रिस्टल क्लियर कन्विक्शन that the divine in spirit as the atman or the brahman as the spirit or the holy ghost as the ruh or allah as sunyam call it by any name that eternal entity is all over this cosmos there is not a speck of space or an iota of time where he is not gyana rational conclusion studying the scriptures cogitating the results of that study in your mind listening to your teacher and guru and develop this rock solid crystal clear conviction that god is everywhere therefore i can interact with him in every state every time in every situation in every space of my life with god this is known as chitta shuddhi purification of your attitude with which you live in this world that chitta suddhi becomes the stepping stone for gyana prapti that is to achieve that eternal wisdom i am that aham brahmasmi i am made in the image of god man god made man in an image of god so what is the purpose of man's life to find his way back to his maker who made him in his own image and live an eternal life in paradise with your maker however you may describe but the main theme is you are one with this cosmos that is gyanam and bhakti is an emotional attachment with this idea this idea is an imagination today by repeated performance of this idea that repetitiveness makes it spontaneous it becomes spontaneous i am with my god all the time nothing can separate me from him my flow of life rotates around the awareness of his presence thereby your personality is getting saturated with the awareness of presence of god and a time comes when you are totally saturated and the process of being and becoming is concluded you as an ordinary egocentric human being by your devoted dedicated determined discipline you have become spontaneously aware of the presence of the divine and you live in god live with god live for the sake of serving god and that too by the blessings of god nothing but god in your life this is the goal how do you reach 
you start your life as a sakava karmi expose yourself to the idea of a nishkama karma and by practicing it your life becomes your chitta your personality your life becomes absolutely pure what is the concept of purity here desirelessness of the things of the world the world ceases to tempt you the world ceases to incite you the world ceases to draw your attention towards itself you are in totality involved and saturated in the awareness of presence of god that you can make of yourself this is what he is saying so don't think you can cheat on yourself and achieve that goal that goal is achievable by correcting your own egoistic individuality when that egoistic egocentric individuality is saturated with the awareness of presence of the divine then you can call yourself nishkama karmi pure at heart purity is not to be assailed or moved or disturbed by any desire of this world that is purity purity is not innocence purity is not ignorance purity is not to be moved by everything of the world you see that it doesn't be able to move you you are poised in the majesty the magnificence the excellence of your own true original being this is dear the sum and substance of the concept of karma yoga which he is going to develop slowly now let us quickly read the fifth and the sixth and the seventh shloka so it will be the conclusion of this semi section from the ninth how do you develop the awareness of presence of god and how do you develop the spirit of interacting with god the ninth shloka the ninth shloka yes the ninth shloka will start this new chapter the eighth shloka will be the conclusion let us quickly read the fifth sixth and the seventh and the eighth we will complete up to the eighth so that we start the new section the ninth in during our next discussion nahi kashit kshanam api shloka number 5 नहीं कशिश शनमपि जातु तिष्ठति अकर्मकृत कार्यते ही अवश कर्म सर्व प्रकृतुणर प्लीज गिव मी अ लिटिल टाइम टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू यू ही सेज हु सो एवर इज बॉर्न दैट each and every animate object animate object means where the life is manifest in activity that group of biological creature and as because it is dealing with humans let us keep the humans uppermost in our mind he says each and every human who is born life and activity are synonymous when all activities are absent in this human body 
from the brain to all the organs, you are declared dead. Till then you are alive. Before that you are alive. So life and activity are inseparable, are synonymous. Sri Krishna here is saying, each and every human who is alive and animate biological creature manifesting his life force into activity kashyata kshanavapi jatu tishtati akarmakrit without being active they cannot exist there is always an activity going on and Acharya Shankara, in his masterful fashion, he describes it very funnily. I say, that is wrong. I am doing nothing. Acharya Shankara says, you analyze your statement of fact of life. You say, I am doing nothing. Akarmakrit, I am doing nothing. What does it actually mean? What does it actually mean? It means, I am doing something which is known as nothing. Not doing anything is doing something known as nothing. And I am doing. Doing is another expression of being involved in activity of verb. So be sure, don't cheat on yourself. Don't be a victim of self-deception. You are a living, throbbing entity. Activity is a part and parcel of your life. If not, life and activity are synonymous. Therefore, whether you are actively aware you are doing something or not, Without your knowledge, you are acting. You are breathing. The source of life, inhalation and exhalation. You are doing that. I am breathing. That is why I am alive. So he says, please get rid of this foolish idea that to remain like an inanimate object, like a pod of clay, a piece of timber, or a block of stone, I can convert myself to that. You cannot. Why? Prakriti Jair Gunai, you are a part and parcel of this Trigunatmika Maya, where you are a victim of Svatvik, Rajasik, and Tamasik. Activity, indolence, and super intelligence. You are involved, so you can't say that you can live without any activity. Don't try to deceive yourself. Then he uses shloka number six and shloka number seven contrasting. You know, contrasting makes ideas very clear. As for instance, you know what heat is. At the same time, you are exposed to cold. Burning fire and solid ice. This is the meaning of what intense heat is burning fire and 
दिस इज इंटेंस कोल्ड जीरो टेम्परेचर आइस बाई कॉन्ट्रास्ट द डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन हीट एंड कोल्ड बिकम्स वेरी 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 ग्लेरिंग एंड अनडाउटिंगली इम्प्रेसिव सो बाई कॉन्ट्रास्ट द सिक्स श्लोक विल मैंशन अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड एंड द सेवन श्लोक विल मैंशन अ स्टेट ऑफ माइंड one state is where you are bound down by the desires of this world and the other state where you are totally free and intelligently thoughtfully introspectively you find out for yourself which is the better of the two the choice is being given in front of you and once you choose sri ram sri krishna will open up to teach you how to achieve that so these two shlokas are almost contrasting each other so that you can now without any ambiguity without any hesitancy you can decide i would like to be this if so you are ready for further lessons so let us read one attitude shloka number 6 karma indriyani sangyabhya i'll break it up into four parts the shloka कर्म इंद्रिया संजम यू हैव फुलेस कंट्रोल ऑन हस्त पद पानी उपस्थ पाई द टू लोअर एक्सक्रीटरी ऑर्गन्स एंड योर हैंड्स योर लिम्स एंड एक्सेट्रा हस्त दिस इज द हैंड पानी इज द पाम पद इज द फुट उपस्थ एंड पाई the two lower excretions these are five known as karma indriya so you decide i will not move good enough but you have no control your mind you are sitting tight by controlling your five active organs but in your mind you are enjoying something karma indriya sangyamya you have controlled your active organs ya aste manasa saran and that very person though he is sitting like a stone absolutely rigid but his mind is roaming around the whole world and he is enjoying it ja aste who he resides manasa saran in the domain of memory and the mind i am still and i am enjoying in my mind the company of my friend thousands and miles away i am sitting still what does it mean the management of your karmendriya is not it all in all with your karmendriya you have to manage your gyanendriya also what are those chakshu karna nasha jiva and twacha those who manage the karmendriya and they roam around in the domain of the mental world indriyani indriya 
इंद्रिय और स्थान विमूढ़ आत्मा मिथ्या आचार तदोच्चते यू आर बेस्ड अबेसिंग योर लाइफ ऑन फॉल्सुड यू आर चीटिंग ऑन योर सेल्फ यू आर डिसीविंग योर सेल्फ यू आर डिसीविंग नो बडी एज बट योर सेल्फ वाई बिकॉज यू हैव नॉट कंट्रोल योर माइंड विथ योर माइंड Indriya and Indriya Artha, you are enjoying in your mind. Though you are sitting still like a piece of stone, you are a self-deceptor. You are a master in cheating on yourself. This is the essential statement of the sixth chapter. What is it? by controlling the movement of your body physical body and allowing your mind to roam around and enjoy mentally indriya and tadartha gyanendriya and tadartha rupa rasa shabda gandha sparsh chakshu karna nasha jiva twacha they and their relevant objects you are enjoying all that you can say is you are deceiving yourself this is the essential statement of the sixth chapter an example of self deception let us read the seventh shloka by contrast sarva indriyani manasa sanyamya नियम्य आरभते य अर्जुन कर्मयोग कर्मेन्द्रियकर्मयोग अशक्त स विशिष्य स विशिष्य ही इज वर्दी ऑफ बींग प्रेज्ड ही इज वर्दी ऑफ बींग एडोर्ड ही इज वर्दी ऑफ बींग taken as a man of distinction who he who manasa indriyani niyab with his mind he has controlled his karmendriya and he has his five sense organs under his control aravate he continues the flow of life that is he continues with the sense of duty which is innate in him no 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 i have this duty to perform i have no escape you start that how do you start sarva indriyani manasa niyam Niyamana means a regularized, not stifled, strangulated. Niyamana means a regularized, disciplined. I am a disciplined person. This is the time for me to do this. That is why we say, have a strict routine of your life pattern. and follow that routine whether you like it or not do not find any excuse of not doing it come what may my routine will not change what are you doing you are disciplining the wayward movement of your mind a person sarva indriyani pancha karvendriya pancha gyanendriya niyamya aravate arjuna karvendrir karma yogam asakta sabhishishate asakta underline the word asakta 
he is not attached to anything. He is performing a the duties for duty's sake. Performing the duties of life for the sake of performing duty. And for duty's sake he does it, but we can give him the liberty to make it sweet. How I am performing my duties of life correctly, thoroughly, properly, excellently, perfectly, because this is how I offer it to my God. I don't know this ritualistic puja. I do not know what is yajna. I do not know what is havana. I do not know anything of that Vaidik Kriya Kanda. But I know God is everywhere and whatever I do, I do it thoroughly, correctly, perfectly, excellently, and I offer it to God. And I offer it to God. I have no attachment, no expectation from the things of the world. This is an attitude. You do not have that attitude now. But he says it is doable. It is achievable, attainable, doable. How? Start practicing. I sit for meditation. Karmendriya are in control. And my manaha, I now try to have some control on it. What is it? Don't move here and there. Stick to my Ishtadeva. And as an anchor, repeat the mantra in a rhythmic manner. Mantra explodes into a meaning. What is the meaning? The summons substance of the meaning is he is in me, I am with So when you repeat the mantra, the sound explodes into an idea. Latch yourself to that idea. Hold on to it. Don't allow to slip it away and assimilate it. My Ishtadeva in this form is residing in me. She is inseparable for me. The suggestion is she sits the same direction as I am sitting not looking at a picture it is here and i am in her she is in me such a person vishishyate asaktam sa vishishyate he who has detached himself from this world and has started developing this attitude with a self-imposed, dedicated, devoted, determined discipline. Four Ds. Dedicated, devoted, determined discipline. And he practices that. These are the two contrasting stages. God is telling you. Sri Krishna in the sixth shloka and the seventh shloka is putting two pictures before you. This is one type of a man. What type is he? He sits so solidly without shaking, without moving, doing nothing. But he has no control on his mind. Ja Aste Manasha Smaran. 
इंद्रियार्थान विमूढ़ात्मा ही इज कंफ्यूज ही इज इन डिसेप्शन ही इज इन सेल्फ डिल्यूजन ही इज सिटिंग टाइट बट इज माइंड इज रोमिंग अवे एवरीवेयर and trying to enjoy the things of the world through his mind i am enjoying this i am enjoying that i am enjoying eating i am enjoying merry making i am enjoying sitting in a corner of your room and your mind roams away the whole world you are categorized that you are mithyachari you are an hypocritical person not only you are trying to deceive others you are a victim of your own self deception mithyachara is one state and asatta san sa vishikshate that is Not only you have controlled your karmendriyas, you have also disciplined your gyanendriyas, your mind, and you hold your mind on a particular object. And lest the mind moves out, you anchor it by rhythmic repetition of your mantra. it explores into a meaning and the summon substance of the meaning is the divine is in me and i am in him so you are practicing the habit of being one with your god you are an admirable person vishishtate you are one of the few you have a standing of your own so dear the fourth shloka the fifth shloka the sixth shloka and the seventh shloka they are sequentially arranged to give you a complete picture of how not to fall into the trap of self deception and how to make a man of yourself now the eighth shloka is the conclusion of this subsection of this chapter what is the conclusion all of us will agree niyatam kuru karmatvam the first quarter of this verse two lines of the verse divide it into four quarters first quarter of the first line second quarter of the first line third quarter of the second line fourth quarter of the second नियतम कुरु कर्मत्व नो फ्रीडम श्री कृष्ण से नियतम कुरु कर्म कंटिन्यू द परफॉर्म द ड्यूटीज ऑफ लाइफ विथ विच यू आर एसेल्ड टूडे योर सेंस ऑफ ड्यूटी विल ग्रो as you grow spiritually as of today see what is the spontaneous sense of duty in you and to make yourself a better human being inculcate such duties which will make you a better human being from day to day to day नियतम कुरु कर्मत्वम नाउ लिसन टू मी माय चाइल्ड श्री कृष्ण सेज परफॉर्म योर ड्यूटीज ऑफ लाइफ द वर्ड नियत इज अ मध्य द्वीपिका न्याय 
Sorry, excuse me. I'll explain to you. In those days, at least I can speak of it in our country, there was such an amount of poverty that we could not afford to have several lights to light each and every room. There was one light you carry and walk along. And then to saving on that lamp, you know what we used to do? A room is partitioned by a wall. We make a hole in that partition wall. See through hole. You can put your head through. In that hole, you put a candle or put a lamp. One lamp will light it up both the rooms. It's economy. It's use of your brains. Here the word niyatam has two distinct meanings. And that's why the analogy is it's a maddha dvika naya, a lamp on a hole in a partition wall. A lamp in a hole in a partition wall. One lamp lightening up two rooms. Niyatam is one word, but it has two meanings equally relevant to this study. Niyatam kuru karmatvam. You have no option. You must continuously niyatam. Niyatam means continuously. If you forget, you remind yourself. But try to make it incessant, uninterrupted. Niyatam. Uninterrupted, incessant performance of your duty. One aspect of the word niyata. And the other aspect is well disciplined under your control. Niyata means under control, well disciplined. Niyata means uninterrupted, incessant, continuing. Continuously, in a controlled manner, continue to perform your duties of life. So, dear, underline the word niyata. Niyata means continuing without let, without hindrance, without inter interruption. Incessant. One meaning of the word. And niyata means totally under your self-imposed discipline. That is, continuously try to discipline yourself and perform your duties instead of make it egocentric, make it divine-centric. Niyatam kuru karmatvam. Karma jayo hi akarmana. This performance of duty, trying to convert it from egocentric activity to divine centric, is much, much, much better than thinking I am doing nothing. That would take you anywhere. Karma jayohi akarmana. Akarmana is that self con deception. I am doing nothing. I am free of everything. Performance-wise, you are doing nothing. 
mentally you are enjoying the world. Don't be mithyachara, don't live on falsehood, don't try to defend yourself. Deceive yourself. Niyatam kuru karmatvam karma jayohi akarmana sharira jatra pichate na prasiddhet akarmana. And if you don't want to take it philosophically, if you start living like an inanimate object, not making use of your limbs, not going through any physical exercise, not making use of your limbs and your organs and etc. What are you doing? You are not even a successful living entity. You are ruining yourself. The name that you are an animate biological object is a misnomer for you. You are doing nothing, ruining yourself. Sharira Jatra Pichate, the, the movement of your body will not come to fruition. You are not utilizing it, you are inviting total ruination, body, mind together. That is what you will do to yourself. Therefore, Sri Krishna places the choice to you. Please, for heaven's sake, discriminate. Use your discretion, your capacity of discrimination and decide for yourself what would you like to make of yourself? A man living a deceitful life, deceiving oneself, what to speak of the world? Because world is a very, very funny place. There's a saying in English, you can fool somebody for all times. You can fool some people for all times. You can fool some people, all people for some time. But you can't fool all people for all times. Don't try to do that. You will not succeed. Therefore, the choice is being given to you whether we will continue to lead this life where you make yourself a slave of the reaction of your activities in this world, either praise or criticism, adoration or curses. That's all that the world can give you, the dual throng. Dvandha, happiness, misery, pleasure, pain, agony, ecstasy, sadness, happiness. Call it by any name. You are swinging like a pendulum in this dual throng. You want that life? Or in this life, a little correction of your attitude with which you continue to live your life. That attitude in a correction changes the whole world for you. And you live in the divine, with the divine, for the sake of serving the divine, and that too by the compassionate grace of the divine nothing but divine in your life. So these first eight shlokas, dear, gives you a total assessment of a situation, allow me to use common words, situation of living a worldly life like a creature in this world 
or you live in this world like a lord, the choice is yours. Well, friends, thank you ever so much for your undivided attention. I have an announcement to make. We are in for the Christmas season and almost all over the world this season is celebrated as a season of holiday, happiness and thinking of the birth of Son of God. So I would implore you to permit me to enjoy a short holiday. We meet again on the first Sunday to continue this very study, the first Sunday after 26th of January. On the 26th of January, the holiday season, the holiday mood, comes to an end, the Republican Day. So, dears, let us have time enough to study and revise. You know these talks are all available on the YouTube, duly, serially numbered with date and number. You can pick and choose those sections which you would like to repeat again. I would request you, if you want to carry this disciplined program of studying the Gita every Sunday, whatever the time may be in any part of the world, it will be available to you. Study the third chapter from its beginning to these eight shlokas. And you'll be ready to start the subsection of this chapter on the first Sunday after the 26th of January. Thank you, dears. Have a very, very happy holiday season. God bless you all.